What's up, YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your techno dad here, and it has been an exciting day already. Denon has announced brand new AVRs. We've got 8K support, HDMI 2.1 support, HDR10 plus support, and actually some things I think are more important than those. So let's get into it right after a word from our sponsor, the Hi-Fi Summit. Have you ever wanted to attend the Hi-Fi trade show, but couldn't? Now you can. On June 26th to 30th, the Hi-Fi Summit begins. It's gonna be a five-day event available to people worldwide. There you can see your favorite brands and you'll get to see all the new products before anybody else. If you're shopping for products, you can even narrow down your search based on price and other specific criteria. You'll be able to chat live with other audio enthusiasts, ask questions about products and get them answered directly by the companies. You'll be able to vote for best in show. You can even leave testimonials for your favorite brands. But no trade show is complete without an after party. So we're gonna have Techno Dad spin every single night so you'll be able to sit back at home bump it on your system go to the hi-fi summit.com buy your ticket and let your hi-fi journey to the top begin all right guys be sure to buy your tickets to the hi-fi summit link is down in the description now before we go ahead and go through this press release now one of the things i liked about what denon did last year when they announced the x3600h and something i was jazzed about if you guys are you know here with the channel a lot you guys knew last year i thought that was an awesome one and if you guys are new here and don't know me or my ugly mug make sure you subscribe up and hit that bell so you get notified when the next videos are released because i love this home theater thing and i'm really into it and i got a lot of information for you so if you're learning definitely subscribe up anyway one of the things i really liked about it is that they brought 11 channel processing down from the 1600 dollars price point to an 1100 dollars price point so that $500 difference is, is huge, huge. And so what they're doing this year, they're, they're doing that trickle down again, where they're bringing something from their $4,000 flagship AVR to their $2,500 AVR. And that, my friends, is 13 channel processing. So the successor to the Denon X6500H is now this year's model, the X6700H. That one will be processing 13 channels. So let that sink in. You're getting a feature from a $4,000 AVR into an AVR that costs $1,500 less. That, my friends, is what I'm jazzed up about. I can't wait to get one in to review. It's going to be awesome. Well, I think it's gonna be awesome. A couple other features that this AVR has is DTSX Pro. What is DTSX Pro, you might ask? Well. DTSX has been limited to 11 channels, 7.2.4. So now you can have seven ear level speakers and six high channels with DTSX and IMAX enhanced. That's awesome. Of course, the X6700H is the only one with DTSX Pro and the 13 channels of processing, but I think this is a huge leap for AVRs in the Denon lineup. Now, it does retail for $2,500, whereas the previous generations like the X. 6400 6500 even the 6300 i bought um when i started the channel back in 2016 that was 2100 dollars. so 500 dollars up brings you 13 channels of processing it will only still power 11 channels but you can get 13 channels of processing with a two channel amplifier or as i always recommend get yourself a five channel amplifier power up that front stage or power five ear level speakers, whatever. If you do that, boom, you've got access to the extra two high channels if that's something you wanna do. Now, of course, an extra two high channels, I would put that in a dedicated theater room where you've got two rows of seating. So you've got two speakers right in front of the front row, two speakers in between the front row and the second row, and then two speakers behind the rear row. So that's how I would set it up if I had the opportunity to have six high channels and of course a dedicated room. Chances are I can't do this in my living room, but hey, some of you might. And then of course, if you wanna run front wides, you can have you know 9.2.4. So that's another option for you guys as well. So let's dig into this press release and check out all the other cool stuff. I know you guys are wanting to know about HDMI 2.1 and all that, so let's get into it. All right, guys, so here's the lowdown of what models are being released, what's the price, and basic features. We've got the AVRX 2700H at 849, seven channels of processing and power, 95 watts, full bandwidth, six HDMI inputs, two outputs, 8K60 and 4K120 HDMI pass-through. And let's move over to the X3700H. 
We've got $1,200 this year, nine channels of power, 11.2 channels processing, 105 watts per channel, full bandwidth. We got seven HDMI in, three out. Now, one of the cool parts about the new Odyssey is that you can save two profiles onto the unit itself without the use of the app. So that is a cool feature there. Moving on to the X4700H, we do see another price increase by $100 from $1,600 to $1,700. We're getting nine channels of power, 11 channels of processing, 125 watts per channel, full range in eight ohms, two channels driven. Again, 8K60, 4K120 HDMI pass-through. And now moving on to the model I'm really jazzed up about, and that's the X6700H with $2499 retail price, 11 channels of power, 13 channels of processing, 140 watts per channel, full bandwidth into eight ohms, two channels driven. And it is the only one with DTSX Pro, as you can tell from the chart. All right, so let's talk about HDMI 2.1 because all of these AVRs will do 8K pass-through but I know what question my viewers and everybody else out there are going to ask. Are these full 48 gigabits per second HDMI ports? And the answer to that is no, they are not. So here's the skinny. Here's the lowdown. And I don't know if anybody else is talking about this, but I am. So how many HDMI 2.1 ports are you getting? Are they all HDMI 2.1 ports? And the answer to that is also a no. You are getting one HDMI 2.1 input and you're getting two HDMI 2.1 outputs. And all of that is capped off at 40 gigabits per second, okay? So just so there's no confusion, that is what's going on. So you get the one 8K port out of all of the other ones, the all are 4K, okay? So you get the one input, all the other inputs are normal 4K, 18 gigabits per second. So just so everybody knows it, just so everybody's clear about that, it is 8K. However, we only have one input source and it's actually not out yet. And that's gonna be either PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X or something like that. I keep forgetting what it's called. Anyway, that's not coming out for a few more months. At least if you get one of these new Denons, you'll be ready for it especially if you have um, LG OLED from last year or this year, then you're good to go. But for the most part, it is just the one because there's only one source. That's it, just the gaming console. So we're gonna see more HDMI 2.1 inputs on more AV receivers from different manufacturers and of course from Denon Morantz down the line, but that needs to still be, you know, you know, you know, figured out because, you know, we only have the one source. So until an 8K streaming device or 8K discs are made so that people can start making 8K players. And I don't know, I still think the whole 8K thing is a little bit nonsense. I think 4K is just fine. Although 4K 120 frames per second is fantastic for gaming. So it's set up for that and you guys are good to go in that aspect. Now we do get 4K 120 Hertz as well. We get the variable refresh rate. Another new addition is HDR10 plus compatibility. I don't know who's still running HDR10 plus, but for those of you with Samsung TVs, maybe some Panasonics for those across the pond, you guys will get HDR10 plus pass through compatibility. New dynamic HDR optimizes the performance of HDR TVs with dynamic HDR with scene by scene or frame by frame dynamic metadata. That's pretty cool. They also have a quick media switching, more watching, less waiting. Say goodbye to blank screens using quick media switching. All right, what else is new on all models? Quick frame transport, enjoy reduced latency for smoother, tear-free entertainment experience. eARC as we have right now with the uh, current models. ALLM is also with the current models. Incredible color, 444 pure color sub sampling, HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, Dolby Vision, Hybrid Log Gamma. I think that's pretty much the same as what we had last year except for the HDR10+, Plus and the dynamic HDR. HDCP 2.3 on all the new models as well just like last year. Audio and surround sound, the only new thing is DTSX Pro, which is only available on the X6700H. DTSX Pro enables users to process up to 13 channels. So let's quickly go over DTSX Pro. Support for all 3D audio formats is available with Denon X6700H and X4700H, including Atmos, Dolby Height Virtualization, DTSX, DTS Virtual X, IMAX Enhance, and Oro 3D out of the box. The X6700H will also support DTSX Pro, which will allow users to enjoy up to 13 channels of DTSX decoding with speaker configurations such as 7.2.6 or 9.2.4. Listeners can also enjoy the latest IMAX enhanced films in 7.2.6 or 9.2.4 speaker configurations thanks to the newly adopted 13.2 channel processing capabilities with external amplification. 
The DTSX Pro feature will be delivered via firmware update later this year, so it does not have it in there right now. Another cool thing is the pre-amplifier mode for the 3700, 4700, and 6700H, which was only found on Denon's flagship X8500H, which was their $4,000 AV receiver, if you don't remember that one. Pre-amplifier mode provides a clear signal path and more tolerance in clipping levels by disconnecting internal amplifiers when the receiver is used as an AV processor and all speakers are powered by external amplifiers. Okay, awesome, awesome. So they're, they're kind of rolling with this. This is an AVR slash pre-pro for the $1,200 AV receivers on up. So that's pretty cool. I did ask them the question if we have flexibility to actually say, okay, I wanna disconnect and power just my five ear level speakers and have my four height channels powered by the AV receiver. And they said, no, you don't have that flexibility. It's either all of them are on internally, the amplifiers, or all of them are off. So if you were connecting it that way, the amplifiers for those five channels that you're offloading onto an external amplifier are still going to be powered. So that's one of the things that was kind of like, eh, but hey, baby steps, right? Baby steps. As far as music streaming and smart home, everything looks to be the same except for the new Bluetooth transmitter. So you can listen to Bluetooth headphones late at night so it'll transmit all that stuff to your headphones so you don't have to have the full system on and wake up your wife and or kids. Cool feature. As far as setup is concerned, I already mentioned the new feature with Odyssey. You can save two profiles onto the unit itself without the app. But if you're going to get one of these AV receivers, you know, you're going to spend more than $1,000, spend the 20 bucks on the, uh, the app so that you can fine tune Odyssey. And even what Phil Jones said, like the, the you know, processing in here is, is better than the ones that's in the AV receiver. So you're gonna get a better room correction using the app. It's 20 bucks on your local app store. And of course, what you guys have been wanting to know for sure, when are these things going to be released? So it looks like the X6700 and 4700 are gonna release mid-June, the following month, the 3700H mid-July, and the 2700H mid-August. So this is the projected release timeline for these new AV receivers. So I've already asked them for the X6700H because that's the one I am interested in checking out. Just because it's got the 13 channels of processing, like if I wanted to run 13.1 Oro 3D, I'm gonna a, have to buy some more speakers and some more speaker cable to add three more speakers. Ooh, that would be cool. You know, you get the top, the center, the center top, like above the TV. Ooh, exciting stuff, exciting stuff. So um, I'm hoping to do some stuff like that and check out all the new things that they have to offer. So I'm pretty stoked about this again. I like that whole trickle down thing. So last year they did it with the X4500, you know, they, they trickled down to the X3600. They let that 11 channel processing, nine channels of power into a smaller AV receiver or cheaper at least AV receiver. And now we're getting 13 channels of processing that we would normally see in a $4,000 receiver down into a receiver $1,500 less. So that's definitely a welcome surprise. I didn't know they were gonna do that. I think that's pretty awesome. That just shows that they're trying to pack more value into their AV receivers, and that's always a good thing. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any questions about these amplifiers or anything else, let me know down in the comments below. Of course, you can always hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. And a big shout out to Denon for letting me in on this ahead of time so I can prepare a video. So thank you guys so much. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting on that 6700. So whenever it's ready, guys, send it on over. I'll be happy to make a video. Well, that's it. If you guys like this video, go ahead, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in your middle screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>